I'm Beth Accomando, host of the KPBS Cinema Junkie podcast, and welcome to another edition of Geeky Gourmet. Geeky Gourmet is a video I do in conjunction with my podcast, and what it is, is it's a video to show you how to make some sort of food item or drink that's themed to the podcast topic. So for this week's podcast, I spoke with stunt people, Brad Martin and Mickey Fashionello, and I thought maybe it would be fun to show you how to make edible blood. Now, I know this sounds like the perfect Halloween thing, and it is. It's absolutely wonderful at Halloween, but it's realistic looking edible blood, and you can actually use it if you want to do a short little film or video and have some realistic looking blood when you're doing maybe a stunt fight or a martial arts scene. So this is edible blood, super simple. It's only four ingredients. So you start with Nutella, and then you also need heavy whipping cream and red food coloring, and then a liqueur of your choice. I use Frangelico because it's a hazelnut liqueur and Nutella is made with hazelnuts, so it complements it really well. So that's all you need to make edible blood. The first thing you wanna start with is, it's a ratio of however much Nutella you use, you want half that much in cream. So we're gonna make a small batch, a really small batch, of just a half a cup of Nutella, and then we need a quarter cup of cream. So I'm gonna measure out a quarter cup of cream in here, and then you're gonna to wanna to heat the cream either in a pan or in the microwave. You can do that for 30 to 60 seconds but you want it nice and hot so that when you add the Nutella, it's gonna blend in really well. Okay, so once you've warmed up your cream, you wanna add the Nutella to it. And so again, this is a half a cup of Nutella to a quarter cup of heavy cream. And that's a really small, basic recipe. I had the chance to do an event where I had to make gallons of this for talking about the Bram Stoker Dracula. So this is a nice, manageable amount of blood. You can let it sit for a little so that it gets the Nutella nice and soft, or you can just start whipping it up. And basically you wanna keep stirring until you get a really nice, smooth consistency. And the thing about this is it's flexible in terms of you can add a little more cream if you want it super drippy or you can add more Nutella if you want a thicker blood consistency, because it depends what you want to do. If you want to make it look kind of like fresh scab, you want to make it a little thicker. And if you want it to be really drippy blood, like from a fresh wound, then you want it kind of liquidy like this. And then you want to add a couple tablespoons of your liqueur. Uh, you can use a measuring spoon, but I just pour in until I think it is about what I want. And if you're making this for kids, you can skip the liqueur. And then you want to add your red food coloring. And this is the point where you can start with a tablespoon. And depending on how much red food coloring you put in will determine the kind of blood that you get. Well, that's pretty good. Not quite giallo red. So you can serve this a number of ways. Uh, a plain cracker like this is nice and you can get a nice blood look on that or you can serve it on bread as well. My favorite is some fresh French baguettes. So that's just the basics of making edible blood. It's super simple. I'm really big about doing themed parties. So if you make some edible blood and let's say you wanna show the thing, all you need to do is buy a few Petri dishes and then you can put all the guests' names on labels around the edge and you can reenact the scene from the thing where Kurt Russell tests everybody's blood to see who's the thing. Or you can have a Dracula party and you can put the blood into nice little vials and make Dracula blood. You can also use this for some gags. Like if your kids wanna take some blood and rub it on themselves and then run in and scare grandma and grandpa or bring a little to work maybe and put some on your face. You know, you can just pretend you're bleeding from the nose and run into work and scream at your boss, I have to go home. Okay, now here's the fun part. What you can do with edible blood. I mean, besides eating it. And it does taste delicious, I promise you. But here's something, since we did a podcast on stunt people, here's how you can use edible blood as stunt blood in a movie that you wanna do. A little video or something you wanna post on social media. So I'm gonna show you how you can use edible blood and take a punch. Yeah. Ow. Okay, 
Then another thing you might want to try with edible blood, maybe you want to slam someone's head against a wall and have it bleed, or maybe you want to do one of those Bruce Campbell things like from Evil Dead 2 where he has a fight with himself. So you know, like if you want to slam your own head against the wall and have some blood, try this. Oh, oh, man, ow. Thanks for watching another Geeky Gourmet. And those are some of the things you can do with edible blood. Remember to listen to the companion podcast. It's Cinema Junkie's Crew Call, the stunt performers edition. And you can find Cinema Junkie podcast at kpbs.org slash cinema junkie or wherever you listen to podcasts. And coming up next on Geeky Gourmet, I'm going to show you how to make some Bollywood popcorn. And I'll give you a PDF so you can make either a Cinema Junkie or a Bollywood popcorn box too. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I'm your resident cinema junkie, Beth Accomando. So, bon appetit. Okay, and the last part of making edible blood is the cleanup. And this is gonna make your kitchen look like a crime scene, which frequently happens in my home. <laughs>